Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bath City Radio for live coverage of today's Vanarama National League South Clash between Bath City and St Albans City from Twerton Park. I'm Mark Stillman, sharing commentary with Quentin Edwards alongside Andrew Kerslake on summarising duties. It's sixth versus fifth this afternoon as two inform teams do battle in a so-called Roman derby. The managerless Saints arrive in Somerset unbeaten in nine, scoring 15 in their last five. Ten of those were against sides in the bottom five, six last week against a Taunton side in turmoil, but they might find it harder to break down Jerry Gill's Roman Warriors today. If Bath keep out the free-scoring Saints, it'll be six clean sheets in a row for the first time since 2005. Three successive 1-0 league wins mean City are right on St Ormes' tails in a predictably tight tussle for his playoff spots. So I'll bring in summarise of this afternoon, Andrew Kerslake. Andrew, St Albans haven't conceded in their last three either, but to me this doesn't strike it as being a low-scoring affair. No, I, I think you're right there, Mark. Uh, St Albans definitely the informed side, and then Sean Jeffers, uh, one of the league's most consistent goal scorers. It's just worth looking at his scats, stats for a minute. I mean, he scored two in a game in each of the last three seasons against City, seven in total, scored over a third of St Albans' league goals last Last season, which was 27 in the league and 29 overall, already scored 16 league goals this season, despite being a sub for the first few months, and in total scored 90 plus goals in the three and a half years he's been at the club, which I have to say for any forward is an absolutely phenomenal record. And in effect, if you can neutralise Sean Jeffers, then uh, you probably neutralise St Albans. On a positive side, then, uh, you know, you have to look at City's defence, one of the tightest in the league, and if you take out those six that were conceded against Western Supermare, then uh, they really do have a very strong back line. Only conceded, uh, if you take those Western goals out, only 27 goals across 32 matches, which is an absolutely uh, fantastic record. So, um, yeah, City have uh, everything to equal St Albans, Mark. They do indeed. I mean, have you ever been impressed with City's attacking play despite those narrow-looking wins on paper? Yeah, I mean, I think the key difference for, for City has been uh, having players of, of the calibre of Jordan Thomas, you and Clark, uh, and now Richard Chin coming in. It's, uh, if you're defending against City, I think it's hard to know exactly what's going to happen because you've got, you know, two players out on the flanks who can uh, put crosses in. You've got Cody Cook there, really good at holding the ball up. And then you've got Scott Wilson to put the ball in the back of the net. So, you know, you've got a lot of uh, change and, and vitality up front. He's just had a glance at his watch, and off we go. Thank you very much, Andrew. As City get the game underway, attacking the Bath end. It's with Greenslade in the left back position inside the Russ. Turns, gives it back to Parcel. Uh, Greenslade again, just in front of the Bath City dugout. Lost one over the top of Smith, who gets it before Barry, the former Bath City player, and charged it down. Cook near the edge of what's cooked. Smith's got, he's got Chin room on the right-hand side. Chin's on side, Chin, he's taken it too wide. He's run into the keeper, he might have injured himself. But St Albans' defence went to sleep. They left Chin in room, he was picked out. And uh, Johnson, who's recently back from an injury, is in the walls again, corner. Yep, it's um, Chin coming in on that ball. He did take that extra touch. You'd think that was probably a ball for to be hit first time or not at all. City's first corner, which Clark will take, looks to go short to Smith. Goes back to Chin, gets into the near post, cleared, not very well from Beast. Now Clark takes a couple of touches, shoots, and it's blocked from there forward. Doing some defensive work. Those initial points put them in trouble with Parcel in the left wing, trying to get the cross in. Head of Francis Clark crosses it straight against the Snowden centre back. It's important being good out of possession. This is one over the top now for Banton. Brilliant intercepted from Reigns. He's done marvellously well to keep it in play as well on that right side, in front of the popular side. As Put into his chest, he's lost out to Ben Smith, who sold a little bit short with a pass, knocked over to the left-hand side to Rizzullo, turns back inside, Banton, sorry, Jeffers, getting in each other's way, they're trying to bulldoze their way through, and Dyer does enough to cover it. There's chipped one over the top to Smith, just too high for him though, and Bowery gets to go inside his party area, turns, gives it back to Johnson. Not very good clearance though, he needs a Hayfield, 30 yards out, central, Hayfield, it might open up for him, he skipped the other side of his man, still Hayfield, urge to shoot, he does shoot and he puts it a yard or so wide, he got the other side of Ben Smith, the keeper was standstill and grateful that it whistles a yard off target, goal kick. Yeah, they actually laid off Hayfield a little bit there, he was able to take the ball wider, turn and shoot and I'm surprised that they weren't on to him much quicker. 
Again, cried away 1,600 metres. Smith's got it down the right side. He should get there before Michael Clark. He's got nobody waiting in the middle, but now Cook's made an advance run. Smith back to Reigns. Tight to the right touchline. Swings one in towards Clark. He's in the post. He's stayed out. And Bowery's having his shirt pulled. And it's going to be a free kick, I think, as Cook tried to gobble up the rebound. Clark was fully on the stretch. I think it just clipped the inside of the post, rolled almost across the line and St Albans get away with one there. Well, that's as close as you can get without scoring. He made superb efforts, Cook, to get into that ball in the first place, just managed to touch it. It looked as if it was going in and then just rebounded back off the inside of the post. Smith closest to goal. Clark gets it into that area. It's a good head away from Hoddle. Bunton can't bring it down. Chin back to Reigns. Onto his left foot and then onto his right. He's giving the ball away. Now St Albans can break at the moment if the ball is good enough, which it isn't. Russ is there to intercept. He could have got to Rizzuto and he snatches in there in front of James, who's all down the line. It's quite good to Banton. Inside now to Ben Smith. Threads it between the lines to Jeffers. Surrounded by players, but he picks out James in room on the right hand side. James might have an opportunity to cross. And brilliant covering from. Clark, that's the other side of his game, at the expense of a corner, but it didn't allow that ball to come in, and St Albans have their first flag kick of the afternoon. Right-footed, in front of the Bristol end, in front of the family stand. It's a floated one into the six-yard box, and he's headed just wide! It was very close. You see you've got the final touch. Bayer was in there, but it fell to trouble Casa Grande, and City breathed a sigh of relief. I think it might have been Francis Clark, actually, who got his head on it, the centre-back in his second spell. Clark trying to do something in style here, the ball to the left-hand side, which isn't a bad one, to Banton, he brings it under control, but couldn't slip it onto Vies. As Reigns is there, patrolling, plays inside there, Hayfield, just wide of the penalty area, Charles Dine, dispossessed to Rizzullo, plays it back, Vies, brilliant interception, it needed to be by Hayfield. Made up for error at the back, and City can now try and break forward with Greenstein on the left-hand side, carries the ball past halfway line, over to Clark, touches it away from James, Skillfully, now wide of the penalty area, still Clark. Hammers it across, Johnson gets a hand on it, Francis Clark plays it against Chin, and it goes out of play for a goal kick. Keeper didn't look too convincing with that delivery, Andrew. He certainly didn't, and Clark this time did slip his markers down that left hand side, put in a really good cross at pace. I think City are putting much better deliveries than they have in recent weeks. There's one over the top for James. Goalkeeper cuts around, he hesitates, and he gets there first. Just before James puts it into the family stand for a throw, and that's opportunity for me to switch places with Quentin Edwards will take you through to half-time on Bar City Radio. Now, I'm sure if you offered Jerry Gill a draw, a draw before the start of this game, he would take it. Especially the form that uh, St. Edwards is in. But Chin now, behind the defence, on the right-hand side. Oh, and again for the second time. Oh, he's... No, he's knocked the ball out of the keeper's hands. I think that was the right decision. But for the second time today, he's found himself in space on that right hand side. His touch has just been a little bit too strong. That one probably didn't take away a shooting opportunity because he was much wider the first time in the first minute. But also, James over the Oh, that's a that's touch. Go, Cox up. Can he get it? Oh, it's a keeper saved that, or has he just put it over the bar? Well, the keeper got caught in possession by Cody Cook. And the ball ran free, Cook fell over, and as he got up and shot, he couldn't control it on his left foot and spoons it over the open goal. Um, and it stays nil-nil, but that's a real warning to St Albans not to play at too much football. And then you get City moving in the left-hand side. Greenstead, Smith in loads of space in, in midfield. Waddle closes him down rather belatedly and a lovely ball out for the right hand side looking for Chin. Oh, and again, he takes that first time to go past Francis Clark with his head this time. Too much on it. Johnson comes out and goal clicks quite comfortably. And but another promising attack. A nice little flick there. There's a good challenge by Parcel. Just held uh, St. Oldens up. And then now Clark on this left hand side looking to take Hoddle on. Goes past him. He's now faced by Dan Barry. I'm sure he's going to go. Oh, is he tripped there yet? No, he's not, the referee says. Um, and he can't be right. I thought he was. I just thought Bowie put his leg out, and uh, now we, do, we know that there's going to be an offside against Jeffers here. That did look like a trip to me. It certainly did. Now, we, do, we know that Clark has a propensity to, for going down, but that. But why yeah. would he go down in that situation? Well, he'd gone, he, yeah. he'd gone past the player. And actually, you know, Barry just pats him on the back, and I think Barry knows he's got away with one there, because that would have been a yellow card as well. Free kick then taken on the diagonal. 
getting Clark on the far post, and a mix-up is offside. Flag had gone up, and there's a right mix-up at the back there between Hayfield and no. Hayfield. And Rather than just take your time and think, yeah, I've got plenty of time to get this downfield, yeah. he's moving it quickly as well. Oh, well, now surely he has it right. That's surely, and it's a caution here for Hoddle. He came in from behind Ewan Clark, fouled him about five yards inside the city half midfield. To Anton, being more central there than he was earlier, and it looks like Vies has gone wide left. And Clark is out, he's got away, he's bantered, and he's a he can't control it. He looks for Smith on the edge, great chance for Smith, and Smith scores for City in the 41st minute. Ewan Clark, excellent interception after Dan Barry's mistake. Cool as a cucumber, passed it to the City midfielder, and he finished with some aplomb, placing it in the, to the keeper's left, into the corner of that Bar City 1, St Albans nil. Uh, I think you can say it's probably no more than City deserved because the attacks that they've made have been much more penetrating. And Clark there got free, ran on with the ball, very selflessly put it across to Tom Smith. Tom Smith for a moment almost looked like he's going to hesitate, just line that shot up and put it beyond him. Boy, will that do him a power of good. Second league goal of the season, and second at Turton Park for him. Previous one was against Maidstone United, the last one. City won the last 10 matches Tom Smith has scored in and he won't know that statistic but uh, he will be pleased. In the second half at some point Scott Wilson who will take over from Tom Smith in that work but Vies now making trying to make something happen 20 yards out shoots low is blocked I think by Parcel half away by City Francis Clark and whether the pitch paid a little bit apart and Barry's Lack of control on that pass, I'm not sure, as they come forward now, as Jeffers is free, he's tugged back by Dyer, Leffy says nothing doing, and, uh, wow, well, I'm surprised, maybe that makes up for the one last season, but well, maybe he's going on Jeffers' reputation, but, anyway, Jeffers certainly looked like he's being manhandled by the City man, and City got a throw right by the end corner flag. If I'd had to call that, I don't know, I thought Jeffers was slightly offside, and that move first started. Jeffers is clearing it with the referee. Referee's having none of it. But I think actually the foul started outside the penalty area. And uh, St. Albans in very hurry to get the ball forward. That's another poor touch. And you can't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I tried to. A poor touch by Johnson, the goalkeeper. I got all a bit excited myself. And then um, that is half time as Ben Smith has the ball in the centre circle. And Ben Clark, the St Albans captain, goes over to the referee, clearly unhappy about the decision not to award at least a free kick. Right, Vies goes over as well, uh, but told to go away. Um, and uh, and Ewan Clark just going over, I think he's having a word as well, saying that, you know, I've been fouled a couple of times, you haven't given. But uh, half time score here, Bar City 1. St Albans City, nil. St Albans getting ready to restart the second half. They'll be attacking the path then. Gio Rizzullo over the top of the ball, and we are back underway as Rizzullo goes back to Clark. Sends a long ball down the left-hand side. Where Viest as well to head it back inside, away from Reigns to Jeffers, forced wide. Clever ball though to Viest, who fizzes one across, and Parcel is there to cover, and corner which Rizzullo will take towards the near post. Poor delivery, headed away from Cook, only to Hoddle inside the box, back to Rizzullo. That's a better one towards the back post, and it bypasses Casagrande, fortunately didn't lead to anything sinister behind him as Chin is there to whack it out for a throw in on halfway. Inside to Banton, but a loose touch and nicked off him from Cook. Hayfield, now Clark, down right hand side, assist for the opener. Three assists and three goals against St Albans this season. Now trying to get Ryan Byrie, he does an effort to ball in. Michael Clark just about does enough to get there before Tom Smith. Kept in from Francis Clark, who skips away from Chin very well. Left hand side, inside to Banton. 30 yards out to Jeffers, just on the edge of the penalty Back to Banton, shooting chance. He's kicked the ball. I think his standing foot has hit the ball first, which means a complete air kick. Much to the amusement of the crowd and much to the relief of Bar City. They can try and lead the ball away, but firm interception from Bayerie stops it. It's far forward for St. Norman's with Banton. To Rizzullo in his bright red boots, picks the ball up in the middle of the city half. Back to Bayerie. Uh, Rod is James from Clark down the left hand side. Greenslade is motoring up alongside him. Greenslade now, edge of the box, slips inside to Cook. Cook shoots, 
good save from Johnson, got it away from goal. I think if Cook had a little look to his right, he had chin in room, City could have worked it and three or four times in the space, they've done well in a corner. Yeah, City's third corner, first of this half, and uh, a great move down that left-hand side, and again, City using Chin and Clark to rob the opposition. Clark puts his arm in the air. Delivers it, six-yard box, Dyer heads it on, Smith's trying to keep in play, he has done. Smith near the byline, St Norman's stop, play towards Dyer. I think it's going to be a head injury and the ball will uh, was belted out anyway for a goal kick. Dyer is checking on his opposite number. I'm not sure why St Norman's have suddenly stopped them, whether they thought the corner initially went out of play. They're, yeah, I was going to say, a very difficult side to play against. You can see why they've risen recently, unbeaten under John Meeks and interim charges. Smith nearly stuck it through to Cook, who was on the side. Russell ahead on, Chin, wide of the box, is waiting for the ball to come to him. Vespe to it, and he wins a corner. I'm not sure Hartley Chin, I don't know, I thought he might have been offside, so he sort of hesitated, and Vespe doing his defensive duties at the expense of a corner for Bath at the Bristol end, in front of the family stand. Delivers it. It's, oh, it's Dio who's unmarked, he came storming in, but he couldn't direct the goal away to go a couple of yards wide of Johnson's right-hand post goal kick. Yeah, that was the almost perfect corner that City have worked on. At the moment, Taunton out of action, of course. As Ben Smith chips it over to the left-hand side, good ball to Vies. Takes it in on his left foot, wide of the penalty area. Slow one across, and Dyer, who nearly scored at the other end. I was terrified Danny was going to score his own net, a sliding interception. As Rizzullo is going to take this corner from that hearty band of St Albans fans towards the near post. It is uh, cleared on the back post by Reigns, just mentioning. And it's a great delivery from Rizzullo, but no one there to deliver a telling touch. Rizzullo gets away from Hayfield near the byline, keeps it in. A low on Greenslade this time to intercept Francis Clark. It's out for a throw in, but St Albans are probing now. And to be expected, I think we knew that St Albans will have further chances in this game. And then equally, you'd say, so will City. Hoddle turns and gets a ball in. Jeffers went for the acrobatic effort and totally misconnected with the ball. It's gone behind him to Michael Clark. Now James on the right-hand side. It's now Bowery joining the attacks. And he's got every player within 40 yards of the Bar City goal. City penned back in at the moment with Ben Smith. Turns away from Clark near the edge of the area. Still Smith. Trying to weave himself into space. Watch from Greenslade. Wide right, has to go back to James, he's not being charged down, which means he can cross into the penalty area where Francis Clark heads it, but it's a soft one, he gets in a tangle, he's gone down awkwardly actually after a bit of a, a collision with Rain. I'm going to do something about it now with Banton, just past the centre circle. Over to the hut, right side now with James, likes to advance forward, gets in a ball, Vies is going to keep it in, he volleys it across and it stayed in by Reigns, it hit Reigns who was grinded, I think sort of off his hip, and uh, it's cleared from Chin. This is St Albans' best spell of the game. Can City see out this pressure? Last time City beat St Albans at home, he was on target, and with Matt Richards, who had a, a hat trick in terms of. Oh, it's a missed kick! Chin is going to get right past the keeper and touches the ball into the back of the net. Out of nothing, the ball bobbled over the feet of Michael Johnson. Chin got there first, Johnson tried to bring him down in desperation, he's avoided a red card, but he hasn't avoided the goal. With 17 minutes gone in the second half, 63rd minute, Bow City 2's and always nil, Richard Chin's first goal for the club. Yeah, Johnson having a bit of a torrid afternoon, we already spoke in the first half with those couple of mistakes he made, Cody Cook very nearly in, well this time he was punished, and uh, Richard Chin uh, robbed the ball away from him, and then running on just only had to slide it into the goal, and City will be very pleased. That's been a sustained period of St Albans' pressure. City really having to manage that well. The breakaway, and suddenly it's 2 0. It won't win goal of the month, but he will not care one bit. Dan Bowery again involved unintentionally. It was his back pass. The back pass was perfectly fine, but it just hit a bit of turf as Johnson kicked thin air. He tried to bring Chin down, who just prods it in from pretty much on the goal line, stabs in, and City are now 2 0 up. Banton tries to step inside as he's tripped in the end. I think a combination of Russ and Smith. Banton, oh, he took the free kick quickly. He's given it straight away to Parcel. Now Cook, free kick is worked in City's favour. In behind to Chin, he's trying to get there the other side of Vies. Again, good covering from Vies. 
a sterling job for his team in their unfamiliar role of wing-back to keeper and there's ironic cheers of what happened a moment ago this time he's a lot calmer and he uh, just plays the ball out as uh, lost from Francis Clark City uh, reveling at the moment Chin was in room he's offside and it's a free kick to St Alban but I mean what a time to get the goal Andrew because City against Kosh as I think Clark's had a little word with Chin who's gone to grind off the ball I said he's a wide player as uh, Hutchinson I wonder whether they'll sacrifice him like Ben Smith Feast up top crossing from Rizzuto onto the head of Hoddle who couldn't quite direct the goal as he's had it for the wider goal Feast is going to keep it in play wider the penalty area now Banton he and Feast get in each other's way back to Ben Smith near the edge of the box Rizzuto now takes it under control shoots completely blocked Feast heads it on it's Helped away from Dyer. And looking for Cook, he's run off his man. And, and slides, and it's Charles and Tom Smith clean through on the left hand side, tight angle, rolls it past her, it's gone well wide. Crossed the face of the goal, and he's still in play actually, I think he's gone out for a throw. So he's on his left foot, but uh, Cody Cook did so well initially. Um, he, it comes to Hutchinson, but Joe Rain's strong challenge, and, it, and he keeps the ball in, gives it to Chin, and then. Can Lanes get ahead of Clark? It's going to be tight. Clark gets there just <laughs> um, ahead of the City man, but uh, real encouragement from the crowd. The crowd are right behind the City yeah, players here. Yeah, and won that ball in his own half. Just City come forward again. Tom Smith wide right. Drives it across. It's a decent save actually that by it's a tight angle, but a good save by Johnson as Smith went for power. That's the Tom Smith of old, isn't it? Well, I just was, a, I, a snapshot. Yeah. Snapshot. I was going to say, I mean, man of the match. It's not my job to choose it, but if I had oh. to choose a player, if he uh, Tom Smith would be my choice this afternoon. Well, he's coming off now, but he—that is the best performance from Tom Smith I've seen in a couple of years. Absolutely outstanding. Scott Wilson coming on for Smith, his 100th appearance here at Dwayne Bart. It's a standing, a standing ovation well for deserved. Smith as he comes off the pitch. Great performance by him. Usually we play more advanced than what Tom Smith has done. He will work his socks off, he'll work that back for. Um, you won't give him a minute's piece, just like Tom Smith hasn't either. Well, he's been playing that harrowing role in recent games, hasn't he? He has. He's uh, St. Albans deep inside the own half, trying to clear the ball. Laird across the front <laughs> And Cook here to break it Oh, he's missed it! Oh, he's Thomas Mulliday. He had an absolute sitter there, Cody Cook. Surprised that the ball came to him. He was running across goal, looked to cut it back, put it wide of the post. Well, that would have been the game. That was the chance, really, to put this game to bed. Down. But it could have been City, could have been out of sight quite easily with that opportunity. And there's going to be a free kick there. For a foul, I think, by Hayfield. Hey. Oh, and there's going to be a yellow card here, I think. City. I'm just trying to see who it is. You and Clark, I think, for delaying the restart. There's a lead talky one. There's this corner by Clark, right footed out swinger into the near post. Not a good one. Oh, it wasn't well defended by Vies, but uh, Hayfield at pace coming across wasn't able to control the loose ball. Wide left goes back to Greenslade. Ten minutes to go. 2 0 to Bath here. And you'll be like, oh, Hayfield just knocked that a little bit too far. Now the City have got to work back. But that's easy for Reigns to spot. Can he find Chin wide right? He can. Early ball in. It looks like that's drifting behind, I think. But oh, it wasn't, actually. And in the end, Jack James was aware that Clark was hovering somewhere in the vicinity and just helped it out for a throw in the end. And we're going to have City's second substitution. Yeah, again, a great round of applause. And boy, as he worked hard this afternoon and what a loan signing he is. Greenslade looking for Wilson on the edge, shoots instantly but uh, doesn't get a hold of it. He goes to Johnson and he's very, very soft. And he, he hasn't been giving too many soft ones, has he? No. Throughout the game. That's one thing he's been consistent on. And I don't always, haven't always agreed. Oh, Greenslade goes past two on the left. Oh, poor ball in though from a city man. If he could have found a good quality cross there, that really would have been something. That's so a, nice, a, a rare break for St Albans. It's a come forward and ball out and wide right. Is he... I've missed that. He's given his pull play back and he's going to caution Greenslade here for a foul. It must have been very late because I was following the ball. Greenslade book had it confirmed. And uh, 
Anyway, so St Albans. Oh, good. Oh, he goes down. Is that going to be a No, it's a stumble. I thought he might have just got caught. He went down in instalments, to be fair to him. It's rather a centre backs appealing for a penalty. Brady Cook leaves the field of play on the far side, and uh, James Alabi. Already a very popular figure here in the brief appearances that he's made. Alabi immediately wins the flick on, looking for Wilson. And Wilson, can it? No, Clark's there. Quite comfortably deal with it in the end, but a nice touch by Maine sets Clark free, gets a better of uh, Francis Clark on the left, and then lunging tackle. And there's going to be a throw to City. Video showed him talking to a young supporter outside the ground who asked him what his name was. He told him it was Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't he like to earn as much money? City, is he offside? No, he's not. Maine's puts it in the near post, but it's comfortably cleared. And St Albans trying to manufacture something. He's Ewan Clark. He loses a tired touch, wasn't it, from the City man? And uh, there on the right hand side, Berger trying to get the better of Greenslade. And Greenslade, be careful, he's already been booked, but uh, very cleverly holds off the St Albans player, lets the ball run out for a throw. You're right out there, Ewan Clark looks desperately tired. He's about to get the ball now. One hopes he can Look recover for Tuesday. For Look at that for a touch. Francis Clark he holds up, holds up, then he goes. Francis, Francis Clark just leans on him right in front of the assistant. Ewan Clark goes down, star shaped on the ground. <laughs> he'd be very Absolutely good in a, he'd be very good in a snowstorm, Clark. He would be. The city start. have got a free kick, and it's a caution for Francis Clark. I think that might be just a persistent yeah, yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> persistent on Clark. Yes. Clark on Clark. And uh, City intercept and get the ball clear. And Clark should deal with that at the back. He does, but Ewan Clark wins it and sets Alabi free in the right hand position. And the ball goes over ben, uh, Michael Clark. Alabi bearing down on goal. Can he finish? It bounces up. He's got a header. He puts it in. It's in for Alabi's first goal for City. With just two minutes remaining. Johnson summed up his day, he saved the first shot, the ball just looped up in the air. Alabi just headed it over the defender on the line, always enjoying that. He goes over to the City fans on the popular side in the corner. Bath City 3, St Albans nil. And actually, on the balance of play, I think that's justified. Yeah, and uh, great for James Alabi to get that goal straight away. He plays to the crowd over on the popular side. Such a popular figure here in a month, isn't he? Oh, yeah. James Alabi, he's just got that about him and uh, absolutely delighted for him that he scored a goal, just takes a little bit of pressure off him and uh, gets him going, you know. And what encouragement that is for yeah. him, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, I've seen today what, it's slightly different, you know, what teams did to City last year where they just sat back and when we didn't have the pace after we'd lost Alex Fletcher and just say, all right, try and play through us. But here's Jeffers with a shot. And, oh, an excellent finish by Sean Jeffers in the 92nd minute. Ball fell kindly to him in the D, turned in one motion. Young, low shot past Casagrande into the corner. So it's not going to be six clean sheets in a row. And uh, a minute and a half left of added time, minimum, of course. But uh, <laughs> I suppose, I suppose it's there worth, has uh, to be a Jeffers goal, doesn't there? Yeah. It does. Uh, if it, if the there's going to be a Jeffers goal, at this time, I'll take it. And uh, Russ is slightly unintended pass, finds Hayfield. He spreads the ball out of fear. I think that fear's first touch, is it? He advances to penalty. Can he produce one of his magic crosses? Alabi with a head up just wide. Just on the stretch, slightly tight angle, went across the goal. I thought that was going to be 4 1 there. And that's what confidence does for you. Uh, in previous games, Alabi would probably try to have brought that down. Probably tried to turn and shoot, instead of which he did a diving header and only narrowly missed that far post. And, uh, so not a lot of time left for the visitors to try and retrieve something here. And he, yes, he is on side. Ball, low ball comes in and excellently gathered that by Casagrande in a six-yard box. Low ball across the box, yeah. goes down. Difficult one to take. So if he can get this clear, then that would be job done. I'm pretty convinced of that. And a well-deserved three points. Drives the corner in, and it is headed clear. Referee is going to blow for full time. And a superb win here for City. Tom Smith in the 41st minute. Richard Chin in the 63rd. And James Alabi 
in the 88th. Sean Jeffers replying in added time, but Bath City 3, St Albans City 1, and a fully deserved three points for the home team. Yeah, for me, City's best performance of the season to date. Uh, they had a purple patch, St Albans, and it was at the start of that second half. City, though, defended well. They kept the chances down, but um, a fantastic crowd here as well, worth mentioning, 1,410. And uh, Tuesday night, of course, home against Truro. You'll be hoping for a good midweek gate uh, for that one. Um, I'm going to ask Quentin in a minute to take us through the results around the grounds uh, this afternoon and uh, what that means for the league table. But St Albans, well, they came here as the form side. They're going over to applaud their supporters, and there was a good cadre of them here this afternoon. But they have been resoundingly beaten and uh, the errors that City managed to introduce into their defence has really been the key to City's victory this afternoon. But boy, there's going to be some tired legs out there, aren't there, Quentin? Yeah, there are. And you're going to mind, you know, playing Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Um, there'll be some very tired legs. The pitch has stood up well, but, you know, the effort, what, uh, you know, those players put in was phenomenal out there. Every single player, and Andrew, you said it right, that was the best performance of the season. Uh, every player to a man was absolutely outstanding yeah. today. And uh, it would be absolutely brilliant. And uh, fully deserved it. They, the game plan against St Albans worked perfectly. Um, and uh, as a result, that they got the three points they fully deserved. Yeah. And I would single out, probably unfairly, a couple of players. I thought you and Clark absolutely ran his socks off this afternoon and what a fine for City he has been and the, the great thrill that he signed on not only for the rest of the season but for next as well and uh, also the other player he went off as substitute uh, Tom Smith I thought he had a cracking game he looked like the Tom Smith of old as you said Quentin and uh, really good and finally it is worth just mentioning Luke Russ in midfield I thought he had a superb first half him and Smith together really dominated that midfield and they were the cause of much of St Albans undoing and the players now they went over to the fans on the popular side they're now coming over to the main stand and I'm pretty sure as they somewhat tiredly limp off the pitch they're going to get a resounding round of applause here for the home supporters who stayed on to cheer them off the pitch and uh, thoroughly deserved this afternoon it's Bar City, the Romans, that beat St Albans this afternoon. Thank you very much for being with us. Do join us if you can't get to Twerton Park on Tuesday night. But that's all from us this afternoon.